Welcome to another edition of Value for Money TV show, a six-week special feature put together by Paradigm Leadership Support Initiative, PLSI, through its Value for Money Advocacy Project, supported by the European Union Rule of Law and Anti-Corruption Rule Act Program. The objective of this show is to discuss key accountability issues relating to public finance management in Nigeria. And on the show today, we will discuss management and utilization of extractive revenue collected by government entities from international oil companies, as well as deliberate on provision of basic amenities to oil producing communities in the Niger Delta. My name is Olusegun Elemo, your anchor on the show. Let's take a breather, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. It appears several steps taken by government to intervene in the socio-economic development of the Niger Delta region has yielded little or no result. The spate of underdevelopment in the region has forced many of its young people to remain in illegal activities of external oil refining. The general sentiment is we own the resource but have nothing to show for it. Many of the communities in the Niger Delta cannot boast of basic amenities such as schools, water, and many more. Young people, male and female in the region, have given up hope that normal life can be restored, and they would rather contribute to the already degraded environment than attempt to find alternative means to survive. Although international oil companies had paid over $1 billion to Niger Delta Development Commission, and part of which was for infrastructure improvement, impact of this money can hardly be seen on the ground. Similarly, NDDC had done very little in adequately accounting for the huge resources allocated and released to it every year by the federal government. This necessitated the order for forensic audit by President Muhammad Buhari last October. The president had stated during the visit by the Niger Delta governors that I tried to follow the act setting of these institutions, especially NDDC, with the amount of money that the federal government has religiously allocated to the commission, we would like to see the results on the ground. Those that are responsible for that have to explain certain issues. The project said to have been done must be verifiable. You cannot just say you spent so much billions and when the place is visited, one cannot see the structures that have been done. The consultants must also prove that they are competent, the president said. Now, joining me to discuss these issues are two gentlemen. I have with me in the studio, J.C. Martin Manufo, Senior Project Officer, Environment from Stakeholder Democracy Network, SDA. J.C., thank you for joining thank us. Thank you very much, Shugun. I also have with me, yeah, thank you for joining us. I also have with me in the studio is Royal Highness, Livingstone Fortune, Deputy Paramount Ruler, Elebele Community from Bayeso State. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, uh, J.C., I mean, over $1 billion uh, have been paid to NDDC uh, in the last few years by international oil companies. Also, NDDC, you know, had continued to receive allocation from the federal government annually. But when you look, I mean, you, your organization is based in the Niger Delta. You, I mean, you have a feel of what is on the ground in terms of development in the Niger Delta. When you hear these huge sums of monies uh, going into NDDC, whether uh, as federal allocation or from uh, oil companies, do you see, uh, would you, can you still justify the existence of uh, the commission? Uh, to be sincere with you, um, it's really sad. It's a sad thing when you look at the huge amount of money that has gone into the region over these past few years and um, look around. Visit several communities in the Niger Delta and you find nothing to show for that huge expenditure. It's really a sad and worrisome situation, to be honest. But, however, what I think is that to clean up NDDC is not uh, the right thing to throw away the bat with the baby. So, it's a matter of understanding what is behind NDDC not performing what it's supposed to do. Yeah. and find a way to rectify those issues within NDC and get, this, get the Commission back on track. Yeah. Because definitely, 
the several communities in the Niger Delta need this infrastructure. They need this development. So uh, scrapping or removing NDC will be a disservice to these communities. Uh, but, but I mean, uh, when President Olusha Gobasanjo, for instance, set up that commission in 2011, mm -hmm. it was to intervene. I mean, 2001, right? 2001. Uh, 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 2001. Uh, it was to intervene uh, in the development of the region. Have we seen any intervention? I mean, communities keep crying out every day that they lack basic amenities, I mean, such as schools, such as water, such as hospitals. Uh, those are the things that the president, I mean, President Olusha at that time set up the commission to, to, to provide. Yes. Um, when you move around, you see paltry um, projects. So you see a couple of roads, you see some schools, borehole, and a couple of others. There's, there's some activities that have gone, but what the problem with NDC is, is the level of implementation and lack of monitoring and validation of the projects on ground. So you give out money to contractors to execute projects, and you don't follow up and know exactly whether these projects were actually executed or not, and you go ahead and pay the money. So you talk about corruption in the system, you talk about poor uh, project management system, you talk about um, inadequacies and lack of capacity within the, within the commission. So these are some of the issues that have held back the agency from actually living up to its building. But like I said, it's not, the project on ground does not justify the amount of money that have gone into NDDC. Exactly. Now I take it to uh, Israel Islands. Uh, I mean, would you, it appears uh, the leaders of the region aren't really concerned about the development of the region. I mean, technically, they've used you know, public offices such as NDDC and other public offices to, as a tool of, uh, uh, to enrich themselves, isn't it? Uh, thank you for having me. My brother, I want to be sincerely tell you that uh, the leaders of the region are not happy with the uh, the commission NDDC. Not to say that the leaders, the community leaders, are using the DAO commission to erase their say. But the political, the politicians, most especially those who are in the House of Rep and Senate, those who are in the press, the government of the day every government from pdp government to this present uh, government those are the people using all this commission to erase themselves why am i saying this because this commission is being uh, formed 2001 i remember yes when uh, asari dokubo lead most of us to potako to block uh, obasanjo coming to river state then our purpose and our inspiration and what we are aiming for then is that forming this commission will bring a development to the region. But today, we are not seeing that. And if you say you want to go and uh, ask them questions, they will use the government to follow you up. Because when you are not in the government, they will use the government which the SSS, the army, to take you to any of their gathering because most of us have seen it. I mean, you were at the heat of advocating for this commission at that time. Yes, because I know everything about the formation of NDDC then. Because Asari Dokubo, Tiki Uguriba, John John, all these men that formed IYC in those days. Of was this what was envisioned at no. that time? No. What they told us and what we are aiming for is for the oil producing community, most especially the oil of Niger Delta, to be changed. Because what they are saying is that the oil companies are paying money to federal government. Federal government are not bringing anything to the communities. And when you ask the oil companies, they will tell you they are giving 60% of the, their production and revenue to federal government. They are only taking 40%. And they use this 40% to maintain their job and every other thing. The rest of it go to the federal government. And setting this commission, for we, we thought that it's a plus to us that we want to see a very big change. But today, if you go to my community, for example, and the whole of uh, Ogbea local government, 
my I come from a community called a Lebele community and they share they call it uh, Kolo Creek cluster. Yeah. If you go to Kolo Creek cluster, you will see the number of oil wells we have. You can't see anything. Go to Embrigi, go to Tusega, go to Elabele. You can't see any project from NDDC. The only thing you will see is this uh, small solar line that they will put around the uh, road that cannot even last. Most of them are not function. They are not. Fun they cannot even last for six months. But for we, we still pleading with the government to remain the commission but for government to set up an agency that will be following up this commission because what shell is doing in our cluster communities that bring the little project that we are seeing from the cluster board they set up a cluster board this board is being uh, inaugurated with 10 10 man committees from each of the communities yes to be headed this board and they will bring small money. Uh, the past is uh, every year they bring 66 million naira for the four communities that produce oil. And this board, the, the members of this committee, are the one to manage this fund. The contractor will come from the indigenous communities. An NGO will be following up from time to time who to be giving job, the job they want to give. If it is a concrete road, the NGO and the board will sit. The board is, is combined by the communities, the ten-man committee, the shell engineers, the NGO and the government. Yeah. So you can't take money from that commission, from the board to your house. Because every little fund that comes from that board will go to the communities. Now, when you see what's happening, for instance, your community and other communities in the Niger Delta, uh, it appears even citizens themselves uh, don't care much about development anymore. Uh, I mean, take for instance the level of oil thefts going on, uh, which those oil companies are saying is responsible for environmental degradation. I mean, you often ask them uh, this effect of equipment failure, and sometimes they say that no, uh, this effect of uh, oil theft and vandalism. So it appears young people in the region have seen, you know, vandalism and oil theft as compensation for underdevelopment. Uh, for that, uh, for me, uh, 2016, I was a CDC chairman in my community, and the uh, early part of 2016. There was a valve station called the uh, OPOP valve station in a level community owned by IG. Okay. February 2016, that valve station get valve failure. And that valve failure caused a very big fire that burned the whole of that area. And when the IG and the their engineers came, 2016, 2016. My brother, they bring their technicians, uh, their engineers, and off the 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 the, the off the the pressure of the the, the spill. yes, and the thing get off and the fire got down. But from that, what happened? Nothing, nothing like compensation come to the communities for the fire that burned the whole of that forest, the whole of that area. Nothing goes to the community. So that was as a result of the, the fire failure. All of us were there. We are the one that called fire service to quench that fire. Because even in that valve station, till date, they don't have any security. No security. The community has asked Ajib severally, write a series of letters. They will send me to invite community leaders to JTF and uh, uh, Commission of Police, GSS, for asking them for community to threaten them yes uh, uh sovereign they will say the communities are threatening them okay now most of our youth see this an, as an intimidation and using their own manpower to take maybe some of this uh, to to tap the pipe with yes. 
on their own yeah. and using to feed themselves because in my own area you can't see one single person from the communities that have been employed by Shell. Even common driver, common cleaner, you can't see. If you went to Kolo Creek, you will see the camp. You go to Obuna, you will see the camp because they say that we are asking too much, so they are now relocating to Obuna. You can't see somebody that is from the region that is working there. The only one or two that you see are these uh, southerners that are paying 20,000 20, at the end of the month. Is that how to engage the people? And you see, we have so many oil wells, manifold, valve station, owned by Shell and IG. I, I'll, I'll come back to that now. Uh, Jesse, I mean, you just heard what he said. Yeah. I mean, looking at the development states in the region uh, and in those communities, but there is this clamor over, over the time uh, for, for resource control, and whether resource control uh, and fiscal federalism uh, would, would really solve some of these challenges. Uh, do you agree with that? Um, the problem is it's more like a political question, in the sense that um, one will also ask the 13% that have been sent to the various states, what have they done with it? Okay. So um, just like His Highness said, I always want us to try and balance the discussion when it comes to revenue from oil and development in the communities because it's not solely the responsibility of the oil companies to provide all this. It has to be the joint you know, working between the oil companies, the state government, NDDC, and all other development agencies within the region to help develop the region. Yeah. So what has the state government done in terms of providing basic amenities in these communities? What, has, what is the state government doing in terms of job creation? I mean, you look at a state like Bielsa, mm -hmm. yes. uh, so with the huge revenue from the federal government that goes into that small state. And you want to wonder how, even apart from the NDDs, how has the state government over the years managed its own revenue? That's the question. Bielsa is a state of about 2.5-2.6 million persons and has one of the top five, top three uh, FAC allocation. Yeah, FAC allocation. And you go through Bielsa, and you don't get to see anything that shows that this is an oil producing state. So the blame also should go to some of these state governors. What are you guys doing with the revenue that is accruing to you? Before talking about Before resource, talking control. About resource yes. control. Let the community chiefs, let the people question their, you know, question their governors. But it appears the communities are kind of distracted. They want to focus on um, Astana oil refining and vandalism. Well, it's not... Um, well, I, I think his realness wants to respond to that. Let me respond to it. My brother, I've been into community leadership right from childhood because I see this as every day I saw it as I don't know how to qualify it, but it's too much because when I was a child following my mother to the farm every day, I see these oil wells keep on sounding. For me, I thought it's, it is a machine sounding till date. But what are we seeing? Nothing. Nothing. My brother, if you are talking about the allocation going to the state, go to the communities. No school in my community, the primary school, no chairs. We provide chairs on our own for the people to use. Uh, when I was, 2010, when I was a new president for two years, we, yeah, there was an uh, MOU between the communities and uh, the four oil producing communities in our cluster we share. And uh, the state government sent a letter to the communities that they are, they want to renovate, they want to renew the turbine, the turbine that was made by our father, uh, Ukilo, in Blessed Memory. The old, uh, the Ukilo that ruled uh, by and River State in those days. Okay. The former governor of uh, by, uh, River, Old River State. Yes. That the state government said they want to, uh, want to overhaul the... Turbine. Yes, the turbine. And after the job, that the communities will be paying light bill, electricity bill. 
But we now say, how can we oil producing community be paying this when the gas is being taken from our own land? So we now wrote to Shell that please, the MOU will enter with you people that uh, when there is light in Shell Camp, there must be light in our communities. Let us have a roundtable discussion. Over the Where time. is our light? Okay. Because when you went to Shell Camp, you, you leave the camp, go to the manifold. In the day, in the night, just like day, if you go to my phone and you see the pictures, some of these pictures, in the night, the same like day, but in the communities, no light. And we have MOU between the communities and share that every day there must be light. And when we ask, do you know what happened to most of us? We are being picked by the state government and work. Especially, I was picked 3 a.m. in the night. In the morning. Now, Jesse, uh, uh, I mean, your organization did a research work called, uh, and you titled it, uh, Communities Not Criminals. Uh, in, in that research work, I mean, I went through it. Uh, you also mentioned that uh, the, the military guys deployed to protect and secure the pipelines are somewhat uh, encouraging oil theft and vandalism. Uh, and I, I mean, uh, it was quoted in that report that sometimes they even collect as much, and even uh, insiders within the oil companies, I mean, collect as much as $6,000 to lower the pressure for uh, artisanal, you know, uh, guys, yeah, artisans to, to tap, to tap uh, the pipelines. What, what did you see on the ground when you visited those communities? Um, I... I Recently, I've come to, I, just yesterday, um, a colleague of mine came back from a trip to Delta, Delta State Warriors precisely. So he showed me some pictures of artisanal camps. And it dawned on me that artisanal refining is more like organized crime. When you look at the sophistication of the operation. And certain things cannot be done without the collusion of the military in the region. I've been to um, parts of his community, Elabele, Imiringi, Otoasega, and all that. And you get to see heavy military presence in the communities. Yet, this illegal oil refining, it's rampant. So there's no way, knowing the, the way the Niger Delta is militarized, there's no way that a pint of crude yeah. will move from one point to the other without the knowledge. the knowledge of the military. The military are, some of them who are posted to the region, let me not blacklist the entire Nigerian army, but some of them who are posted to the region have been able to, you know, take a look, look away and allow illegal refining to go on because they've been heavily pranked. Okay. Yes, it's, 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 it, there's no gain thing to it. Yeah. You know. And they also see it as a means to survive themselves. Yes, when you when you have um, uh, security forces who provide boots for themselves and kits and all that, and this operation is going on with the huge um, uh, amount of money that's coming to their pockets from it, then they could as well say, "Okay, I'm not from this region. You can kill your environment for all I care." Once I get. My but some say uh, some of those military guys are from the region. Yes. Maybe a handful of them, but lots of the uh, military people involved in the whole JTF are not, are not from actually from the Thank you very much for that. Uh, I've been speaking with uh, JC Martin Manufo. Uh, he is the Senior Project Officer Environment for Stakeholder Democracy Network SDN. I've also been, uh, JC, thank you for coming. Yeah, I've also been discussing with his Royal Highness uh, Livingstone Fortune. He's the Deputy Paramount Ruler. Elebele community from Biasa State. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for coming oh, on the show today. Uh, Value for Money is a project of Paradigm Leadership Support Initiative, PLSI. It is supported by the European Union Rule of Law and Anti-Corruption Rollout Program. It so will come your way again next time. Please always remember that public accountability is possible only with a vigilant and involved citizenry. I remain yours sincerely, Olusha Thank you for being part of the show today. 
See you next time. And God bless Nigeria.